do you answer when someone asks you, how are you doing? If you're like me, it'll be something like, really busy. For more and more people, it seems like feeling overwhelmed by everything we have to do has become the new normal. But is it possible to balance a busy lifestyle and have peace of mind? Michael Miller is one of the founders of the London and New York Meditation Centers. Back in 2003, he lived in Los Angeles, leading the creative department of an entertainment magazine. Michael lived the busy life and started to feel the impact of it, suffering from sleep deprivation and stress. His way of coping with the busyness of life was through meditation. Michael. <laughs> Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Come on in. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. <clears throat> Lovely. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Excellent. Now, I understand you usually start your morning ritual a little bit earlier. Usually I start about 5 a.m. 5? The alarm goes off at 5. Okay, so thank you very much for delaying a little and bit. Thank you for giving me a break this morning. <laughs> so how, how important is it to have a morning ritual? when it comes to finding peace of mind. Well begun is half done. If you can start with a sense of, I know what I'm doing for a period of time, as opposed to sort of leaping up and going every which direction from, from the first moment, I think that sets the stage for things to be smoother. Michael starts every day with a 20 minute morning meditation. And today, I get to join him. How's that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Good. And then uh, in early morning, well. oh, you can wrap up. Stay, stay cozy. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice. So just sitting comfortably, hands as you wish, and let the eyes go closed. You let your attention scan through the body. Just notice the sensation of your breath. Maybe it's the movement of your chest or your stomach. Thoughts. Don't mind that. Push it away. Take a deeper breath in through your nose. And you can put your hands together and give a little rub and warm those up. And then just drop your hands into your lap with your palms facing up. And drop your head forward. How's that? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, f I think I was too distracted. Mm. I just, I, I listened to, it helped what you said. If you feel distracted, don't push it away too hard, just come back. Mm. But that was happening every, like, almost every few seconds. Yeah, yeah. And that, th this is, I think, one of the great myths about meditation, that what I'm going to learn is how to not think. Yeah. I'm going to somehow bring my mind to a halt. Yeah. And this is not meditation. Like right. The mind is designed to move. And it's interesting because I naively associate meditation with doing less, but mm -hmm. that is not the case. Meditation is very deep rest, much more deep than sleep. And the deep rest of meditation is the basis for very dynamic activity. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing 18 things, I do five really important things right. efficiently and effectively and I'm more calm and more graceful in the midst of it. So it sounds like it's about making choices. Like if you say do five things well rather than 18 hmm. things, but how do you prioritize what those five things should be? If I'm trying to think, okay, I've got 18 things, which are the five most important? It's hard to figure that out. There are too many variables. Mm. But if I am in a calm, clear state and I'm not kind of trying to do things so fast that I'm actually creating more stress for myself, mm -hmm. I can see these three actually need my attention. But if I'm still in an agitated state, I don't know, I just try to crank through them all. There are a lot of people in society right now who are extremely stressed and mm -hmm. very busy. Are you optimistic about the state of society and how people can deal with their stress levels? I think some changes need to be made and at the individual level start with what you have control over, which is I can carve out the time, I can sit down and meditate, and then I'm gonna go out into the world in a different state. Mm. 
and it's, it's peaceful individuals that are going to build a peaceful society. For Michael, meditation is the answer to finding more peace of mind. It enables him to prioritize, creating more ownership of his time. Sounds tempting, right? Is that what his students are looking for as well? So I could find out, Michael kindly introduced me to three students from his meditation center. What was uh, the moment that made you think, okay, I've got to try something, and, and then it was meditation. Let's, let's go in turns. I just wasn't present in my life, you know, I was getting very anxious and I was worrying a lot. Just feeling overwhelmed by life, I think, is the best way of putting it. And I just wasn't giving each moment what I should have been. I think it's essential in this day and age because we're trying to multitask so much stuff. Mm. And I think it's really unhealthy. The benefits of meditating when you are stressed, I know to check in and close my eyes, I will feel like I'm able to move through it. You just value time in a different way. Huh. For many, peace of mind is elusive and the search for it daunting. Meditation may be one way to achieve it, but there are other ways. Designer Thor Tekulva has a minimalistic lifestyle. It provides him with a deep appreciation of simple pleasures. <laughs> he lives on a narrow boat in London, on just 20 square meters. Good to meet you. <laughs> what a home, what a place. Oh my God. Like a yoga <laughs> Thor is all about redefining spaces. <laughs> it's very small. His peace of mind Kitchen. comes from the choice to live in a calm yeah. environment. Bathroom over here. Yeah. The boat is the is the counterbalance in the city. So whereas life in London is very sort of fast-paced, busy, in ways extreme, I would say, compared to other cities I've been, I've lived in. So I really enjoy this moment where my home is just that little place of refuge where you can go and time slows down when you step on a boat. Through his work, Thor reinvents public spaces, like the park bench bubble, a plastic bubble that can be attached to a bench, creating a personal refuge to escape busy surroundings. Producing work that promotes calmness or living in a, in a very simple environment doesn't mean that I don't have the sort of the productive, hectic side. Um, which, if you go to, to the place where I actually produce this work, it's full of machines and materials and people and, and tension and, you know, there's a lot of hectic, a lot of busyness. Um, but I like to just leave that there. So there is a balance. Busyness in his studio, calmness on his boat. As a designer, you reflect a lot on society. Um, but how do you cope with all the stimuli of modern life? This is probably something that works within, within the concept of minimalism as well, knowing when you've got enough and when you, you, know, when you don't need any more. I think a very practical tip would be to just open the drawer of your, of your desk and have a look. What do you keep in there and actually why, you know? Do you need 15 pens or is one <laughs> actually just enough? And then make sure that that one pen you buy is actually a pen you really like. Making that sort of conscious decision is, is, is powerful and also probably something we need to do more as society. It's a fair point. Knowing when you have enough and to be the master of your own boundaries. All right, bye -bye. Time to head back to Michael. Over the last few years, he's spoken to over 6,000 people about stress, meditation, creativity, and peak performance. Meditation grounds him and gives him the ability to focus better. But I'm curious about the other tools he uses to further structure his life. So I do Getting Things Done, mm -hmm. GTD, yep. Yep. which is that personal productivity program that's all about getting stuff out of your head and onto paper and getting perspective. Mm -hmm. So any idea that you get, you try to grab it and, and get it into the system. I put it into my phone or onto a piece of paper so that I'm not trying to remember things. Mm -hmm. 
and then every week to sit down and take some time to kind of step back and look at your whole life. Mm -hmm. Here's everything, all the projects I have happening. Anything that is multiple steps is a project. I've got a list of 50 or 60 or 80 projects that I'm all working on all at the same time to step back and go, oh, this is where my life is. Yeah. This is the stuff that I'm trying to make happen. Here's the status of all of that. Then, you know, you don't think, oh my God, there's 18 things to do. You go, oh right, I've got a picture of the whole thing. These are the five things I'm going to do right now. Just right. impulsively, you start to move toward what is actually important yeah. instead of trying to remember what might be important. It's got to get bad enough before someone will address their problem. Wow. And I think that's true in every part of your life. This is what is bad. Does it have to be miserable? Or is it just like, oh, I'd like my life to be a little bit better. Yeah. And that's bad enough for some people. Yeah. Like things aren't perfect. Things aren't as optimal as they could be. That's bad enough for, for one, one person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. See you Thank later. you so much. Safe okay. travels. Yeah. My journey to London has shown me there are ways to find peace of mind while living a full and busy life. Thor is the master of his own boundaries. He consciously chooses where and when he lets chaos in. Roz has learned to truly appreciate and value time. And Michael finds his peace of mind through meditation. He made me realize that your mind needs to be clear in order to prioritize and do things more efficiently and effectively. Getting consumed by the fast pace of life today is all too easy. It's learning to press pause sometimes that's a little harder, but oh so worthwhile. <laughs>